Got a little bit of good news headed our way, Curtis. While I can't sound the all clear just yet, I certainly think we have dodged probably the most dangerous part of this storm. Now that said, it's still going to get very noisy here as we get into the evening hours with a lot of thunder and lightning, heavy rainfall, and I can't even rule out maybe a few strong wind gusts across the area as this line of storms pushes through. As you see behind me right now, though, it's relatively quiet. We've got a few pockets of rain that have developed up around the Oxford area over towards Okeana and Hamilton. That was the stuff that came through earlier this evening that brought the dark skies and thunder and lightning across the area. But you can see that pretty much faded away and now we've just got some spotty showers. Rain is going to increase as we go into the evening hours. Let me show you as we hit up into parts of Fayette and Union counties and southeast Indiana. The closer you get to I-70, the worse the weather is at the moment. You can see very heavy rainfall just north of Connorsville, just north of the Liberty area. And again, tremendous lightning. It's November. You don't really think about thunderstorms too much this time of the year, but but every couple of years, we'll get an outbreak of severe weather here during the month of November as we're kind of in our second severe weather season. But boy, look at this really lighting up the radar tonight along I-70, basically from Columbus to Indianapolis into Illinois tonight. Showers and thunderstorms are roaming from west to east. Good news, though, if you notice, they're kind of in a line here. So what that means is that the threat for tornadoes, for example, relatively low now. In fact, I think that threat is all but diminished across the area. Never say never completely, but the threat's really low. And I think of greater concern as we progress our way through the evening and overnight, because this line is stretched out from east to west, it's going to be slow to sag across the area. And the result will be, as you can see, excessive rainfall. Very, very heavy rain is going to be the greatest concern as this activity begins to move eventually into the metro. I think it reaches the Cincinnati metro probably somewhere around 9 or 10 o'clock and then kind of works its way across the entire area. So we've got a flood watch for all of you that are north of the Ohio River and our neighbors across northern Kentucky here through the night tonight and into tomorrow morning. So as I alluded to, the greatest threat from these storms tonight will be the potential for flash flooding. To a lesser degree, there's still the threat for some strong gusty winds. Although again, overall, the nature of these storms will be to weaken as we work our way through the night, but I'm not going to rule out the threat for maybe a few wind gusts. Now in terms of that tornado potential, that was really maximized during the middle of the afternoon. Now that we're getting into the evening and night, that threat is going to decrease. It's not zero, but it is going to decrease, and I suspect that this watch that's been put out until seven o'clock at the top of the hour will probably be allowed to expire. If we get another watch, it may be a severe thunderstorm watch that's issued for the area. So again, the tornado potential not zero, but it is awfully small. Now in regards to the threat for severe weather today, the bulk of it occurred just where we thought it would up there from Indianapolis towards Fort Wayne over to around Lima. We are on the southern fringe of that, and that's more of the concern for some of those strong wind gusts that could come with storms as they come through, say nine or 10 o'clock around here. So again, I showed this at the top of the newscast. When you're looking for severe weather, you kind of need um, you need multiple ingredients here, and we had a lot of them today. We had the strong cold front. You'll see that here in a minute. We had the upper level energy. We had the instability. We made it to 75 this afternoon, and did you feel how muggy it was out there? So we had plenty of moisture, but we lacked the wind shear, and that's where the winds turn in the atmosphere. So storms, if you don't have the wind shear, they can't rotate, and that's one of the reasons why I think the threat for severe weather is actually decreasing over the next couple of hours. But check this out for a strong cold front 77 in Louisville. We're at 72 right now. It's in the 40s back across parts of Illinois. So cooler where cooler air is going to move in here by the time you wake up in the morning. Right now, 72 degrees at the airport. Not much rain so far. Let me show you future cast. I'll walk you through this. Watch as that line sinks in our direction. Here's 8 39 o'clock through the 10 o'clock hour. So while you're in the middle of watching football tonight, it's going to be a little stormy out there. And then by about midnight, this activity is dropping out of the area. And by 2 a.m., we should be completely in the clear. And for your morning commute, Roadways will probably still be wet, but I don't expect rain to really be falling. And then we'll deal with cooler and mostly cloudy conditions for your Monday. And it looks like as we head into Tuesday as well, some clouds to linger. So for tonight, 50 the overnight low, but that won't happen until morning as the rain and storms push through. Tomorrow, rain moves out with falling temperatures. 63 will be at midnight during the day. As you see here in the day plan, our temperatures will only be in the 50s. Here's your seven day forecast. So we're going to see things cool off here as we work our way through the next couple of days. But Curtis, check out those temperatures by the end of the week. Folks have been searching for winter. How about some chilly highs? Maybe only in the 30s by Friday.